Welcome back to video lectures and one more problem we are going to be solving on this longitudinal vibration when the mass of the system is consists of translatory motion as well as the rotary motion right so the problem is here the find the natural frequency of the system which is shown in this figure so we need to calculate the natural frequency in this me mechanical vibrations most of the time we are going to be calculating the free natural uh, frequency we are going to be calculating so because this one we need to find out the the resonance point between the exciting frequency as well as the in a natural frequency of this system so in this case there is a two springs we do have taken right and one says circular rod also is going to be there it has certain radius is going to be r from the center to this fixed points of this springs are going to be at a distance of b distance it is there so then what will happen so then I had given a gently a displacement to this one. So that means an initial force was applied on that system towards this side. So then what will happen? This object is going to be started to oscillate in. That means due to this force, it displaces in this direction. Once you remove this force, automatically it will going to become back. So in this way, it is going to be oscillating with respect to the point going to be here. Whoa. Right? This object is going to be oscillating this way and this way. At the same time, one spring is going to be elongating, another spring is going to be contracting. Right? And but the total deflection in this spring and this spring is going to be the constant. So then how would you calculate this part? So when this object is going to be trying to roll in this direction, that means as you know by using this energy methods, the total energy within the mechanical system is equal to the the kinetic energy due to translatory motion plus kinetic energy due to rotational motion plus the potential energy stored inside the spring. That's what we have learned. Now we are applying in this direction. So for this one, this object is going to be trying to move in this direction. After certain time, it will come back its mean position and move into the extreme position. That means the energy conservation is going to be taking place here. Energy conservation here. That energy neither created nor be destroyed, but it can change to one form to other. That means strain energy converted into kinetic energy and again strain energy this way. So then what will happen? So it is going to be displacement is going to be taking place. Right? In the horizontal direction, the x distance it has taken. So that's x is equal to what is the distance it is going from here? That is going to be r plus b into angular displacement theta we have taken. Then once you derive this one, we will get it that is going to be the, the velocity of this object right so come to the point here the total energy we have taken here that's going to be translatory motion due to kinetic, kinetic energy kinetic energy due to rotational and potential energy of this spring as you know the kinetic energy of this one half mv square right and then the velocity we are going to be getting from this one that's going to be it is going to be start to rolling about its own axis right and then half mv square plus rotational motion half moment of inertia into angular velocity plus half a x square this is going to be the potential energy or the elastic energy in the spring so then x we are going to be taking here because it is rotating about its own axis so then what happened that's going to be half m r square theta square plus half m r square theta square so this is going to be the moment of inertia of that system that means the circular memory so then half k x is equal to both r plus b whole square theta square. Once you are getting, I am going to be simplifying this equation. That is going to be 3 by 4 m r square angular velocity square plus half k into r plus b whole square theta square. As we know, the t is going to be the constant. Then I am going to derive it with respect to time. So that is going to be 3 by 4 m r square 2 angular displacement angular velocity into angular acceleration plus half k into r plus b whole square 2 into angular displacement and theta because we are deriving the theta is here is the theta is the variable in this case also theta is the variable then finally we are getting 3 by 2 m r square acceleration plus k into r plus b whole square theta equal to 0 then this is called equation of motion right from this equation of motion I am going to be deriving the equation for the circular frequency that circular frequency omega n is equal to that's going to be square root of 2k r plus b whole square by 3m r square 
and similarly the natural frequency of that system is going to be 1 by 2 pi into omega n that is the 1 by 2 pi square root of this value we are going to be getting so this way we are going to be calculating the natural frequency of the system because the system is consist of the two types of kinetic energy one is due to translatory motion one is due to the rotary motion and the spheres possess the potential energy in terms of elastic energy or strain energy so this way we are going to be calculated Thank you.